Hello and welcome to another video on surds and in this video we're going to be looking at multiplying surds. So apologies in advance, you can probably tell my voice is croaky, I do have a cold at the moment. But um, anyway, let's go through this. So what happens when we multiply surds? There are some rules that we can use and we can apply to make things a bit easier for ourselves. So here I've got an example, we're going to do the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 9. Now at the moment, hopefully you can see that both of these are not thirds because we can actually evaluate the square root of 9. So let's just do it with these numbers first and hopefully you'll be able to spot a pattern that you can use for when we do look, start looking at thirds. So let's do this. The square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 9. Well, we can evaluate each, um, each number. So the square root of 9, we know that that is 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. So this is literally 3 multiplied by 3, which we know is 9. Now, is it a coincidence that our answer is 9? Well, no, it's definitely not. Because if we start with a number, so if we start with the number, number 9, and then we square root it, and then we multiply it by itself, well, we're just going to get back to where we started, because we're just undoing the operation. Because remember, if we square something and square root, those are inverse operations. So we take the square root, and then we square it, we're back to where we started. And let me just do that with another example so, so you can see. So let's say we had the square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of 4. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. So there's going to be 2 times 2, which is obviously 4. Now let's move over to some thirds and see if we can apply the same rules. So let's say we had the square root of 7. That's definitely a third. We can't um, take the square root of this number here. We would just get a decimal that goes on forever. So the square root of 7 multiplied by the square root of 7. What do you think the answer would be? Well, remember, we can't do it this way because we can't take the square root of 7. But if we look at the same pattern as before, if we're taking the square root of a number and then multiplying it by itself, we're just going to be left with that original number. So our answer is just going to be 7. Let's do another one just to reinforce that idea. So let's say we had the square root of 10 multiplied by the square root of 10. So we're taking the square root of 10 and then multiplying it by itself. Well, we're just going to be left with 10. Now, hopefully these ones here have been quite self-explanatory, but what about if we change it slightly? What about if we want to do the square root of 7 multiplied by the square root of 5? Now, I'll give you a, a minute or so just to think about this, see if you can work out what the answer would be. Now, I'm going to give you the answer first and see if you can spot why that's the case. So, if you said that the answer was the square root of 35, you would be correct. So, the question is, why is this the answer? Why is the square root of 35 the answer? Now, hopefully you can see how the square root of 35 came about. We just multiply these two numbers together. But why is that the case? Now, to answer that, I'm going to go through each of these examples here. Now, of these first two examples, I took the square root first, and then I multiplied them together. But we could just change the order. What I could do is I could multiply the two numbers first, and then take the square root. So this is exactly the same as 9 times 9, and then take the square root. So 9 times 9 is 81, so this is the square root of 81, and the square root of 81 is 9. And you can see that we get exactly the same answer. All I've done is I've just switched the order around. So if we do the same with the next one, to work this out, the square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of 4, we can just do 4 times 4 first, and then take the square root. 4 times 4 is 16, so this is the square root of 16, which is 4. So let's do the same with the next one. So if we multiply the two numbers first, so this is going to be the square root of 7 times 7, and 7 times 7 is 49. So the square root of 49 is 7. Notice how I'm getting exactly the same answers. I'm just switching the order around. And if we do the same for this last one, so we're going to do 10 times 10 and then take the square root. Well, 10 times 10 is 100. So it's the square root of 100, which is 10. Now we're getting onto this one. If I do this uh, order first, it now becomes clear why this is my answer. So I'm going to do 7 times 5 first, 7 times 5 and then take the square root. Well, 7 times 5 is 35, so that's the square root of 35. But this is a third, so I can't simplify this anymore. So this is my answer. 
So what we've stumbled across is a rule that we can use with multiplying thirds. So if I just generalize this rule, so let's say we had the square root of a multiplied by the square root of b, and a and b could be any numbers, then what we can do is we can, that is exactly the same as if we take the square root of a times b. Now this rule is really powerful because it allows us to multiply thirds. Okay, I've got some questions for you to have a go at now. So pause the video and see if you can answer these questions using the rule that we've just come up with. Okay, so question one, we've got root three times root five. So again, we can just take the square root of three times five. And we know that three times five is 15. So this is our answer, the square root of 15. Now this is a third and we can't simplify this anymore. So this is the final answer. Okay, if we do the next one, we've got root seven times root two. So that's the same as the square root of seven times two. And that is the square root of 14. Okay, and the next one, the square root of 11 times the square root of six. That's the square root of 11 times six. 11 times six is 66. So that's the square root of 66. Now the next one, we've got the square root of eight times the square root of two. So that's the square root of eight times two. And the square root of 8 times 2, well, that is the square root of 16. Now, be careful. You may have left your answer like this, but this here is not a third. We can evaluate this. The square root of 16, well, that is just 4. So our final answer for all of this business is just 4. Okay, the next one. We're going to do 5 times 6 and then take the square root. 5 times 6. And 5 times 6 is 30. So that's the square root of 30. And again, we can't do anything with this. This is our final answer. The next one, we've got three um, thirds that we're multiplying together, but the rule is exactly the same. So we're just gonna multiply all of these numbers together. So it's gonna be the square root of two times five times three. So what is that? So two times five is 10, 10 times three is 30. So that's the square root of 30. The next one, we've got 11 times 10, and then the square root, 11 times 10, and 11 times 10, well, that is 110. So our answer is the square root of 110. The next one, the square root of 6 squared. Well, that's the square root of 6 multiplied by the square root of 6. And, well, the answer to that is just going to be 6. I don't need to do any calculations because I'm taking the square root of something and then I'm squaring it. So you could write all of this out. So it'd be the square root of six times the square root of six, which is gonna be the square root of 36, which is just six. But I can see that we're just undoing the um, operation. So we're just back to where we started. Uh, this one here, we've got the square root of two times the square root of two. Well, I know this here, all of this business, uh, let me just highlight it. This business, well, that's just gonna be two. And then if we think about this business over here, the square root of three times the square root of three, well, that's just three. So all we've got is two times three, which is six. And uh, if you did it the longer way, you would still get six as your answer. And now the last one, the last one, we've got the square root of two times the square root of two times the square root of two. So again, this business here, this is just gonna be two, the square root of two times the square root of two, and then we're gonna multiply that by the square root of two. Now, this is where it's, uh, we move on slightly because we can't do anything with this. We can't do two times the square root of two. So this effectively is our answer, but in third notation, we don't write it like this. So whenever you, you're multiplying two things together like this, we just take away the multiplication symbol. So when one of them is a third, we could just take away the multiplication symbol. So our final answer, we would write this as two root two, okay? So that would be our final answer. So this is not wrong, but generally uh, when we're writing things involving thirds, we don't write the multiplication symbol. A bit like in algebra. So a bit like in algebra, if we were to have, for example, you know, um, A times B, we don't write it like this. We write it as AB. It's exactly the same with thirds. We just put the two numbers together. So how did you get on with those 10 questions? Hopefully that was a nice introduction to multiplying thirds. I have got another video on multiplying thirds, which I'm going to release next week. And it's just um, going to move on a step from what we've done today. So hopefully you'll join me for that video. And thanks again for watching. Take care.